Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel, and here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. BitBoy calls out Coinbase for not distributing SGB tokens to XRP holders. Yes, we're talking about Songbird tokens, SGB. And I'm going to tell you right here at the outset of the video that um, what Coinbase did, if it's not actual theft, then it's tantamount to theft, meaning that it's it's the same effect for Coinbase's customer, whether it's actual theft or not, it's it's going to have the same uh, impact on the Coinbase customer. And so I'm going to share with you what sparked all this off. It had to do with comments from uh, Ben Armstrong, who, of course, is uh, BitBoy Crypto, runs a very popular BitBoy Crypto uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I believe it's the largest cryptocurrency channel that's based out of the United States. I think he's got somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1.5 million subscribers. And, and I, I'll just, it's, it's amazing. So there are some people, I think some people just have a misunderstanding of what's actually going on here, but there are some people that seem to be apologists for Coinbase. And if they're fully informed, I have, a tr I have trouble wrapping my head around that, honestly. So I want to share with you what kicked off this conversation literally yesterday. And again, it started with, with a comment from Ben Armstrong. And I want to share with you my thoughts on this because justice should be done. And also, uh, I'll tell you good news here also at the outside of the video. There's an attorney within the XRP community named Fred Rispoli. You may have heard of him. I highlight him on the channel somewhat regularly. And um, he is actually taking action against Coinbase. And so if you're somebody... Uh, who is expecting to get your Songbird tokens from Coinbase. Um, obviously, they haven't distributed them, and they may never. They're silent on the issue. If you want action on it, you actually can contact Attorney Rispoli if you so choose. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that he's been vocal about that. Uh, so I'll give you all the details, but uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, so anyway, into the article. Crypto influencer and YouTuber Ben Armstrong, a.k.a. Bitboy Crypto, has called out Coinbase and its CEO Brian Armstrong for failing to distribute Songbird, which is SGB for short, uh, airdrop tokens, to XRP holders. And here's the tweet from Ben Armstrong. It's on your screen. reads as follows. Wait, Coinbase didn't give XRP holders their Songbird token distribution? Uncle Brian Armstrong, what's the deal? With Brian Armstrong, of course, being Coinbase founder and CEO. Peace continues. Notably, it has already been over a year since Flare Networks distributed the SGB airdrop. However, Coinbase is yet to distribute SGB tokens to customers who held XRP on the exchange during the screenshot for the airdrop in December 2020. For the uninitiated, the SGB, uh, SGB is the native token of the Flare Network's Canary Network. Notably, it serves as a stress test network for Flare Networks. As with the Flare airdrop, Flare Networks promised holders of XRP at the time of the screenshot a distribution of SGB tokens. Consequently, Flare Networks distributed the tokens on September of 2021. So let's pause to back up here. I'm going to have to assume that most of you are aware of the Flare airdrop, which is supposed to be happening allegedly, finally, uh, in, in January of 2023. So allegedly within the next couple of months, we should have our first distribution of Flare tokens. If you're due Flare tokens, you are also already given, or you should have been given by now, uh, SGB tokens which were actually launched before the Flare airdrop. So if you qualify for Flare, you, you qualify for SGB. Now, the Songbird network is what's known as a canary network. And basically, it's it's not technically a test net because it is a actual live blockchain, but it's a live blockchain that is intended not to be used for, uh, you know, projects and developments of crucial importance it's designed to be yes a real environment to be test but to test projects there first work out bugs in a real live working environment which is why it's not technically a test net and then if it's if, if that works and you're you're happy with the results then you take that project and you plop it down on the actual flare network so songbird network is basically like a test bed it's not technically a test net but it is like basically a test bed to test Whatever it is you want to do, and if it works, you move it over to Flare Network. 
Flare Network got this idea from Polkadot. They were the first ones uh, that I'm aware of to have done this. Uh, Polkadot launched a uh, platform, I believe it was called Kusama, and that's, it's the same thing. It's just, you, you test your ideas there, you, you develop something, you got the code ready, plop it down there. If you test it and you don't see any bugs, there's, there's no vulnerabilities, then you move it over to Polkadot. That's pretty much it. But as a result of it not being a test net, it's, it's a live ecosystem, there's an actual coin attached to, to Songbird as a result. And it's traded today on cryptocurrency exchanges. It has an open market price determined based on supply and demand. So it's, it's actually worth something. Not that it's worth a ton now, and the price has plummeted, not surprising, given it's the bear market, and, you know, Flare hasn't even launched, so, you know, you think you get more value out of, uh, you know, the Songbird token once Flare launches, but it's not even, you know, like, those tokens, anyway, haven't been uh, launch, uh, launched at least yet. So that part's actually not surprising here. But Coinbase has been completely quiet about this. So he, what happened, ultimately, is <clears throat> the idea for Songbird was developed after uh, Coinbase and other exchanges agreed to uh, agree to the, the Flare Network airdrop. So Coinbase didn't know that SGB was going to be coming down the pike because Flare Networks didn't even know. It's an idea they came up, work, up with. But <clears throat> it ended up being the case that any address that received uh, the Flare tokens, they didn't even have to do anything else. They just automatically get the SGB token. But Coinbase hasn't said a peep about SGB. They're still going to, they say, you know, provide to their customers the Flare airdrop, <clears throat> but uh, they've, <clears throat> excuse me, they've not said a peep. They haven't even acknowledged that Songbird exists ever. And it was distributed initially over a year ago now. <clears throat> so, Ben Armstrong, I got to take a sip of water. Oh, sorry, folks. <clears throat> I've been talking a lot. So Ben Armstrong, sorry about that, folks. I like to do these, I like to keep these videos raw, just that does mean one take, but it, it, it is what it is. I like to just be like a stream of consciousness rolling. I like it to be as though, it, 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 like the way that I would speak if I were sitting down with you on a patio enjoying an adult beverage, just talking like that. I like to keep it like that, so just keeping it raw. I don't have any fancy intros and stuff like that. I just let the content speak for itself. But anyway, so Ben Armstrong caught wind of this, and that's why he started tweeting out about this, which I think is a healthy, positive development here. Um, and so... My fellow uh, XRP YouTuber, The Bearable Bull, responded to Ben Armstrong and wrote, Welcome to the BS the XRP Army has had to deal with for years, Ben. And then Chip from uh, On The Chain <clears throat> shared a tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, Jungle Inc. And Jungle Inc. has a different viewpoint on me, so I'm just going to respectfully disagree with him. I'm going to share with you his thoughts, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's fine, but I, I do disagree at least on an important aspect of this. I agree on some things, but on the most important crucial aspect, pretty strongly disagree. But uh, Jungle Link said, Coinbase never agreed to support Songbird. You can't just fire coins at an exchange and expect they will want to be involved. And so Chip retweeted that and wrote, Jungle is correct. So they're on the same page. And again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's perfectly fine. I just want to engage in thoughtful discourse here. That's all it is. Um, so no offense, infend, uh, uh, no offense intended uh, to anyone just to be super duper clear. I just want to put out that one disclaimer and then move through this. Uh, the bearable bull responded and wrote, I know, <clears throat> but if we can extract some money from Coinbase back to the army, then I'll try. And then I shared my thoughts and um, I used some adult language. I will censor myself as I go through my own thread here. Um, but when I'm on Twitter, it's different. Like, so the reason that I even censor myself in here is because I know that there are adults that sometimes have their little children's in the background. And so for their benefits, so they don't have to worry. Uh, I don't go, you know, typically like rare exception where there've been a couple accidents. And I'm like, well, whatever the stream of it's happened like twice ever, two, three times, maybe in, in mind you in like close to four years. Um, so other than that, I, I, I pretty well keep it, you know, PG 13, but again, that's for the adults that have children in the background. I respect that. So. Um, but here I did use some adult language, which I, I will censor myself, but here, here's my response to this. I wrote the following. I understand it's unfair that Coinbase was put in this situation, but it's also unfair that Coinbase customers were put in this situation. So pause to think about this. Understand, like I acknowledged a few minutes ago, Coinbase didn't know that Songbird was going to exist because Flare Networks didn't know that they were going to invent Songbird. So as a result... The customers, when they decided to 
you know, um, have their XRP on Coinbase at the time of the December 2020 snapshot so that, that would ensure that they'd get their flare tokens. They didn't know that there would be a second coin that they'd have to consider. So it's unfair to Coinbase, but it's also unfair to Coinbase customers who were also put in the situation and they just want their damn songbird, right? And so then I wrote the following. <clears throat> Even if Coinbase is under no legal obligation to distribute, they still have the coins. They've financially benefited. So let me pause there. Coinbase, they do have the Songbird tokens. You can see it on the blockchain. It's provably the case. I didn't pull up for the sake of this video. I've seen it though. I may have shared it in a previous video at some point. Uh, they haven't sent those Songbird tokens anywhere. They haven't sent them back. They still just, they're sitting on them. Those are, those are tokens intended for the customer. They're just holding them and not even acknowledging. They're not even talking about it. How disgusting is that? How disgusting is that? And so that's why I'm saying, like, even if it's not illegal for them to just keep the Songbird tokens because they didn't even know that they were going to be getting them. Okay, that's one thing. But even if so, I still say it's tantamount to theft because the, the net result for the customer is the same whether it's actual theft or not. And I'm not, and just to be clear, I'm not accusing them of theft, but I'm also not ceding the point. I'm not giving up the idea. I'm not saying that they didn't steal either. I'm saying from a legal perspective, I don't know, but very clearly, Fred Rispoli, member of the XRP community, thinks that Coinbase should have to take action. And that's why he's taking contact information from people who are owed Songbird tokens from Coinbase. He wants to move forward with presumably some sort of legal action. So he thinks there is something there. I'm just being careful with my language here and not asserting that they did something illegal. But either way, even if they're even if, and that's an if, even if they didn't do anything illegal, as far as I'm concerned, the end result is the same for the customers. Anyway, and then I continue in my thread. I wrote, we're supposed to be okay with that? Even if it's not legal theft, meaning it's not the legal definition of theft, I still insist what Coinbase is doing is tantamount to theft and it's harming relationships with customers. Other exchanges were put in this situation and made the distribution work. Coinbase can't? And so pause to think about this. This is, as, as I understand it, the largest airdrop in history outside of any hard forks that resulted in an airdrop. Like obviously there was the fork of Bitcoin resulting in Bitcoin cash. Uh, set aside that, but in terms of just there's an initial distribution, um, you know, not resulting from a fork. This is the largest one in history, so far as I know. And I, if somebody, anybody's aware of something that's bigger, I just don't know, fine, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen anything else. I mean, we're talking about over 100 exchanges signing up from the get-go. That is unheard of, that is unprecedented. Other exchanges, also unfair to them, they didn't know that they were gonna get Songbird, but other exchanges did already distribute Songbird to their customers. And Coinbase can't? I'm sorry, what? Can't or won't. And then I continue. If I were running Coinbase, I'd feel like a grade A S-word head for not giving the coins to the intended recipient customers. Again, I agree it's unfair to multiple parties. But this is a situation, and I do not view Coinbase holding onto the tokens as the right thing to do. To anyone who disagrees, please answer. Why is it preferable for Coinbase customers to get effed rather than for Coinbase to do some extra work to get the customers their coins? And I'm not arguing what they're legally required to do. I'm talking about what's right to do. So let's pause right there again. Why does it, why would anybody, given the circumstances, because we already know <clears throat> it's unfair to Coinbase, but it's also unfair to customers. Why would it make sense for anyone to be more on the side of Coinbase? Again, I announce it's not fair for them. But if if it were you running Coinbase, would you, could you sleep at night knowing that this happened? It's unfair to you. You shouldn't be put in this, this situation. But my God, do you not? Your Coinbase, you don't have the means. Like I understand that they've had hard hard financial times this year, but even last year they still not only were they not a, like uh, not only were they have they not distributed like they're not even talking. How do you defend Coinbase when they won't even acknowledge that Songbird exists? Not one single sentence from anyone working at Coinbase about Songbird. How can you defend that? You can't, like, I don't think you can. I, I really don't think you, I mean, people do fine technically. I'm just saying you can't do it successfully. And then I wrote the following. This isn't some fly-by-night airdrop. 
I wouldn't expect Coinbase to distribute all airdrops that are forced upon them, but can we agree this is different? Songbird happened because of Flare, which is, to my knowledge, the largest airdrop in, airdrop in history. If that's incorrect, let me know. And, and I ended up later correcting, uh, you know, of course, if there's hard forks, blah, 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 as I just cited a minute ago. And then I said, I don't know if Coinbase is inundated with a bunch of BS airdrops from tiny market participants. I can understand ignoring those, especially if they weren't resulting from an airdrop that Coinbase did agree to. But seriously, can we agree these circumstances are different? So pause to think about this. I am not aware of Coinbase being inundated by a ton of airdrops from Fly Bay Night operations. So you can imagine if somebody's just giving a bunch of coins somehow to, to uh, a Coinbase addresses, uh, like who even knows about that? Who is harmed by Coinbase not distributing those? And look, so look, to be clear, I'm not arguing that it would be right if it's like, say Coinbase is getting like a thousand airdrops a month or so, like, that'd be insane, obviously. But let's just say, say it's some crazy high number. Would I, Moon Family Sedan, think that it would be reasonable to distribute all of them? It's just out of these, you know, grifters that are just trying to get traction, you know, by taking advantage of the, the you know, the, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet? Well, no, because then they're just trying to take advantage of one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet. That's not what's happening with, with Songbird. That's not what's happening. And I don't think that Coinbase is getting inundated with a crazy amount of airdrops. I've never heard of that. If they are, then you tell me about it. And I'm not saying that they would have to satisfy all those or that they should, not even that they should. But when you're talking about a, a, a gigantic number of people, I don't know what the final number is, but tons of people with XRP on Coinbase at the time of that snapshot for Flare, I, I can only imagine what that means. You know, and you can actually figure it out through the math. I just don't remember the result. Actually, I may have done them. It's ringing a bell because you can see what the deposit was for the Songbird tokens. So you can kind of do some backwards math to figure that out. I just don't recall off the top of my head. But it was a lot. Suffice it to say, it was like a, a metric F word ton. So given this is the case and it's a unique situation, we're just asking in this one particular specific instance to do the right thing this one time, one time, and they won't even acknowledge it happened. I don't know how you defend Coinbase here, but to my fellow XRP YouTuber, Jungle Link does, which is why I get nothing against him. I'm just saying I respectfully disagree, but he wrote to me and he said, why is it not a fly-by-night airdrop? It came out of nowhere. It has not been widely adopted. It trades 75% of its volume on BitTrue. Does not seem to be a profitable coin to support. And so upon reading that, I noticed that he kind of shifted gears on what the discussion was actually about. And so I responded and wrote the following. I never heard back from him. But that's fine. He's not required to write back, but I wrote the following. I'm talking about the airdrop itself. And you're talking about market performance as in market performance for Songbird, the token. That is not what I was talking about. And I'm talking about the airdrop itself. And then I wrote, is the flare airdrop fly by night in your estimation? Because that's the reason Songbird happened with over 100 exchanges voluntarily accepting uh, the, uh, the Flare, Flare token? Well, that was unprecedented. And so think about this. He seems to think, based on what he stated here, that Songbird is a fly-by-night token, but it's only going out in the proportions it's going out because Flare is going out in the proportions it's going out. That's it. So if Songbird is a fly-by-night token, then, then certainly Flare... The Flare coin would be a fly-by-night token, wouldn't it? Because it's going out in the same proportions, you know, relative to how much XRP you had, anyway. But but then how could you argue that the Flare token is a fly-by-night coin when, again, outside of hard forks, as far as I know, it's the largest airdrop in history. That's fly-by-night? Then what isn't fly-by-night? <laughs> so I just respectfully disagree on that. And I also don't get... There were a bunch of other stuff. I didn't pull up all of his comments, but he's just pretty heavily defending Coinbase. I'm not getting it. I'm just not getting it. I just, I think that uh, although we should acknowledge that it's unfair for Coinbase, it's also unfair for customers. And I think it's more reasonable to focus on the unfairness to the customers than to strongly focus on the unfairness to Coinbase. That's my firm stance. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If anybody disagrees, we can just get out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, if you would disagree with me, that's fine. I respect everybody's opinion on this. I do love a uh, civil discourse. So if you think I'm wrong, you can, you can articulate why. I don't get mad when people tell me I'm wrong as long as they're being adults about it and not being rude. So you guys just uh, go ahead and let loose in the comment section below. Oh, actually, um, I wanted to highlight this, though. Uh, Fred Rispoli wrote to Ben Armstrong and said, if you want to get your SGB from Coinbase, you can get your SGB from Coinbase. Send contact info, name, email to uh, contact at hodlaw.org. 
uh, subject, I want my SGB, and even put it on his hodlelaw.org website. So if you go to hodlelaw.org, you can see this. Uh, he even wrote about this. If you scroll down, you can see here. Uh, we are also seeking lead plaintiffs for an action against Coinbase and other exchanges that have accepted Songbird tokens yet failed to distribute them to XRP holders. And so again, I don't know for sure, because I'm not a lawyer, if Coinbase broke the law or if they didn't, but Fred Rispoli seems to think that they're doing something that is illegal, and that's why he intends to file an action against them. That's that's what I'm getting from this. So I'm not going to make the assertion because I'm not a lawyer, but either way, legal or not illegal, Coinbase customers deserve to get their Songbird tokens, period. And Coinbase is being immoral. They're not even talking about this, and they're sitting on their customers' tokens. It's despicable. It's disgraceful, period. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.